Elness suggests that what the great spiritual masters were always able to do was to live with trust in the middle of uncertainty. They never reduced or eliminated their uncertainty altogether, but they found a way to live with trust in the midst of uncertainty. That the move is not from uncertain to certain, but from uncertain to trust, which, as Elness says, requires the ongoing presence of uncertainty. This was the one line in the book that just leapt out at me. And in our own world, it is the certain people of faith, the fundamentalists, fundamentalist Islamists in the Middle East, fundamentalist Christians in our land, who are so often a danger to themselves and others, whose search for the certain faith or whose certainty about faith literally causes physical harm to others. There's a whole other way of understanding faith, though, and that is to embrace trust in the midst of uncertainty. To say, yeah, I don't know everything, but I'm going to trust anyway. One of my favorite quotes of all time is this quote from Frederick Beatner, which I so love. Whether your faith is that there is a God or that there is not, if you don't have any doubts, you're either kidding yourself or asleep. And then he says this, doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it awake and moving. I've been thinking about uncertainty and certainty in our political life as well. We're in the midst of a political campaign right now, and the fascinating thing to me is that on both sides of the aisle, both on the Republican side and the Democratic side, you have candidates touting how certain they are of their positions, how they have never wavered or changed from their positions, and talking about other candidates who have changed their minds on issues over time as if that's a bad thing. I have to tell you, I am really glad I don't have all the beliefs now that I had when I was 20 or when I was 30 or 40. I'm glad that God has allowed me the chance to evolve and change and grow in my faith and in my walk. Imagine what it would be like for us if some of our major politicians in society now and then were to say, you know, I'm really not sure what I think about this. We'd freak out probably, but you know what? It would be the truth. I'm also reminded of a great saying from our own John Wesley, the founder of United Methodism, who once said, when I was a young man, I was sure and certain of a great many things. Having been wrong dozens of times in middle age, I wasn't quite so sure of much. And now, when he was speaking as an older man, he said, now I am hardly sure of anything except what God has revealed to me. So if the truth is that uncertainty is always with us, if the truth is that we never reduce uncertainty to zero, or we never increase certainty to 100, then the point is this, that there's still another move, and that's the move of trust. It's the move of trust in God, of trust in faith, of trust as as Marcus Borg said it, that the reality of reality is gracious. That even in the midst of uncertain times in our lives and in our world, even as we are walking in the midst of a dark wood, we still yet will trust. It's a powerful thing to think about. So Sunday we move on to the next gift of the dark wood, and that's the gift of emptiness. I'll give you just a little teaser. In my mind, to the way I see it, there are at least two kinds of emptiness. There's the emptiness that is terrifying. The emptiness that tells us we're no good, that everything is hopeless. And there's an other kind of emptiness altogether beyond which is filled with the peace and love and grace of God. So we'll talk about emptiness on Sunday as we continue to unpack the gifts of the dark wood. See you Sunday.